to bring the man of God. Amen. We have an international evangelist that is evangelized all around the world. He's known to tell it just like it is. Regardless of what country you go in, what creed or what color, black and white, red and yellow, whoever's out there, he'll tell it like it is. We have evangelist Eddie F. Sutherland here from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. We want you to stand and give this man of God a hearty hand as he comes forward. If you're happy, say praise the, Lord. praise the Lord. Okay, smile, smile. That's it. Oh, my Savior, look at that. <laughs> God bless you. You may be seated. We give God thanks for Pastor Crump and for all the ministers that are here. Many of you out there have a ministry, and I'm thrilled about it. I thank you for coming. I, when I call... Pastor Crump long distance some few days ago and said I would like to be here for Sunday night I just wanted to look on your faces again and, and fellowship with you uh, I think he announced over the broadcast that I not only am I scheduled for England and Germany but I've got to go to Okinawa Japan so it's going to be well who knows <laughs> Someone said that, uh, well, between now and this time tomorrow, the king can come. <laughs> so we want to do our best while we can. And I'm so, just so thrilled that you came to be with us tonight. I love you to pieces. <laughs> Praise God. All right, I see some of the tape players out there. Others of you have your pad and pen. Uh, tonight's message is a little different, a little unusual in some ways. We'll call it the number seven. Some of you know that in the Bible, the number seven is the number of fullness, the number of completion, the number of a finished work. So we are going to look at the number seven and show you some things I'm sure you'll be glad to hear but most of all I'll tell you right now the sweetest of the seven is the Holy Ghost <laughs> I want you to just make up in your mind right now you won't leave here tonight without being saved and filled with the Holy Ghost the number seven all right I'm going to need a lot of Bible readers tonight a whole bunch of them <laughs> Thank the Lord. Take this one down. I will read it for you, but you, you take it down. And I'm sure you're familiar with Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16 through 19. And that's where you're going to see about seven bad things. You see, if you get seven good things, it's perfection. But seven bad things is abomination. So you're going to see in Proverbs 6, 16 through 19, seven hated things. All right. Now let's see. Here's my first reader. Matthew 11, 28 through 30. All right. Matthew 11, 28 uh, through 30. If I should go too fast, you just slow me down. My next one, James 4, 6. All right, this is right on the front row here. James 4, 6. Psalm 101, verse 7. Thank you. Psalm 101, verse number 7. Here's a little verse here that I think... Will <laughs> Really, raise your eyes a little bit. I need a reader. Leviticus 19.14. Brother Wright! Brother Wright! 
You got it, man. You got it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Leviticus 19, 14. That's my friend. <laughs> the next reader. Proverb 26, 27. Oh, somebody back here had it. Oh, 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 I know who that is. <laughs> Deborah, you can't close her out, I tell you. Proverbs 26, 27. Okay, now, someone out here almost had that one. Whose voice was that that almost had it? Well, you get ready for the next one. You take the next one. Deborah got that one. Okay. You can have St. John 8, 47. That's good. St. John 8. 47. Another reader? Proverb 26, 20 through 26. All right. All right. That sound like Sister Mary? I sure will. Proverb chapter 26, verse 20 through 26. Mm -hmm. Revelation 4, 5. I heard it back here. Okay, Revelation 4, 5. One more. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Isaiah 11, 1 through 3. All right, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1 through 3. The number 7. Anybody miss one? Want me to go back over any portion? I'll be happy to do so. The number seven. Uh-huh, St. John, 847. Mm-hmm. Thank you. God bless you. It's so good of you to come. You see, we had a little short problem here, and because of that, we have to pause just a little bit. <laughs> but while we're pausing, we can make a little melody in our heart. Praise the Lord. Making melody in my heart. Making melody in my heart. Making melody in my heart. Unto the King of Kings. Yes, making melody in my heart, making melody in my heart, making melody in my heart, up to the King of Kings. Yes, I'm making melody in my heart. Making melody in my heart. Making melody in my heart. Unto the King of Kings. Now listen. I'm going to need one of the brothers to come and stand down with me. I'm getting ready to receive the expense offering. What I'll do, I'll just read it through. And then my Bible readers, you be ready because I'll be calling on you. The number seven is what we use for our subject tonight. The number seven. The number of fullness, number of completion, Representing the number of a finished work. If it's seven good things, it's perfect. But if it's seven evil things, it is an abomination. I'm just pausing a bit. Some of us still getting settled. And in Proverbs 6, 16 through 19, let's hear how it sounds. These six things doth the Lord hate. 
yea, seven are an abomination unto him. So there you see if it's six bad things, it's terrible. But when you add one more and make it seven, it becomes an abomination. Number one, a proud look. Number two, a lying tongue. Number three, and hands that shed innocent blood. The next one, a heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. And feet that be swift in running to mischief. A false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. Oh, my father. So we want everybody to get off that list tonight. Let God save you and give you the Holy Ghost. That's that beautiful seven that God loved. The Holy Ghost. So then, a proud look. What does it say, Matthew? My reader, 11, 28 through 30. <laughs> She's one of the veterans. One of the old timers. You know what to do. <laughs> Let's hear how that sounds. Come unto me. Jesus said, come unto me. All ye that labor. All of you that are laboring. Are, and are heavy laden. And heavy laden. Burdened down. And I will give you rest. I'll fix you up. I'll give you rest. Take I, my yoke upon you. Take my yoke upon you. And learn of me. And learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. Jesus said, I learn an example from me. I'm not proud. I'm not stuck on myself. I'm not big-headed. I ain't cute. I ain't trying to be a, a Casanova either. Said, so now, come on to me, all of you that labor the heavy laden. I'll give you rest and take my yoke upon you and learn from me. And ye shall find rest unto your soul. Well, I'm meek and lowly of heart, and I'll give you rest in your soul. For my yoke is easy. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. And my burdens are light. Thank God. Thank God. So tonight you know this already. Regardless of what the problem is. Uh, unemployment. See. Inflation. Air pollution. Water pollution. Your home tore up. Your wife done packed her rags and left you. F for Slim Jim. And you having problems with your oldest son, he looked like a baboon. And your daughter don't know what she want to do with her crazy self. Well, then Jesus said, come to me. Just come on to me. Leave the dope alone, you crazy thing. Come to me. Get out of that old shack and come to me. I'll give you rest. You're hunting for it, but you don't know where to go. Come to me, Jesus said. I'll give you rest. And you'll learn from me because I'm meek and lonely. And you shall find rest unto your soul. So if you're here tonight, can't seem to get it together. You tried this, that, and the other. Still no peace. One church to the next. And still messed up. Come to me, Jesus said. I'll give you rest. For my yoke is easy. My burdens are light. James 4 verse 6. James 4 verse 6. But he giveth more grace. But God increases his grace he giveth more grace wherefore he saith wherefore he saith God resisteth the proud God resisteth 
the proud but give of grace unto the humble but it gives grace to the humble a proud look now most of you are looking real nice tonight I'm so thrilled about that because across the country and uh, around the world men and women have lowered the standard everything goes now see everybody's born again everybody's supposed to have the Holy Spirit they'll say it in a minute you see but they haven't changed their ways see they, we know they're not in Christ because if there's any man in Christ he's a new creature and their old things have passed away Behold, all things are become new. If you still dip in snuff, you ain't saved. Uh, you, you, you get your railroad mills and your buttercup and chewing your brown mule tobacco and, and sucking on them pale mills, you ain't saved. No, no, you ain't. Drinking that Budweiser, Slits, Miller's Highlight, and Old Granddad and Bloody Mary and Screwdrivers, you ain't saved, you devil, you. So you need sweet Jesus. God, he loves you to pieces. Perfect one who never sinned, but he took your sin and mine and nailed it to the cross. God Almighty. And all you got to do is come and get it. Hallelujah. Right where you sit. You don't have to go home and fix nothing. Just right where you sit. Just get on up here and, and confess your sin. And ask the Lord to forgive you. And he'll fix it right here tonight. See, you don't have to go fix nothing. Come just like you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a right now God. He know how to do the job. You're in the right place tonight. Let him sanctify and give you the Holy Ghost. Find rest in your soul. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. So God resists the proud. So like I say, most of you are looking real nice. But a proud look. Now what would possess a woman to bleach her hair? As if to say, Lord, you didn't do it right. And I'm going to show you how it's supposed to be done. I'm going to get me a peroxide job. I'm going to get me a tangerine streak. And I need a little eye shadow to, to make my eyeballs stand out. And I'm going to put some colorless lipstick on so my lips will glow. I'm a woman, but I want me some slacks and blue jeans, paint suits. Folks think I'm a lesbian, but I ain't studying that. I just want me some paint suits. A proud look. Some of them even paint the toenail. And you have to look at the lips to see if they're bleeding or what is the matter with them. God hates it. Hates it. The beauty is on the inside. <laughs> oh man, get, just get saved and eat the word and let God sanctify you. And fill you up with the Holy Ghost. Talking about somebody beautiful. That's you man. That's beautiful. You might have some thick lips, but your show sure looks nice. <laughs> yeah. When, when you smile, it, it, it makes people tremble. Say, so she can't win no beauty contest, but when she smile, make my name, my knees shake. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He beautified the meek with salvation. Blood washed, sanctified. Holy Ghost feel, Yeah! Looking good, looking good. That's what you need, man. 
You don't need that artificial mess. A proud look. So the men going to have to do better too. It's a shame for a man to have long hair. So they painted pictures, they said it was Jesus, you know, with his hair all down his back. There's no scripture for that. No, men in those days, they wore the hair to the bottom of the earlobe. We only have one record of a man with long hair, that was a rebel named Absalom. His hair was so long, they chased him, his hair got caught in a tree and he hanged his crazy self. But when you see a man with long hair, he's on the sissy side. Yeah, he's a he, she, he don't know what he is. So what you do? My friend is, is backing me up over there. You take a regular comb, the wide teeth section of it. A regular comb with the wide teeth section. If you cannot run that through your hair, you got too much hair on your head. See? If you have to use a rake or a pick to get through that stuff, get to the nearest barber shop. Get them nuts off your head. Proud look. Who ever would have thought that a man would get him a jerry curl? <laughs> Supposed to be a man strutting around with a jerry curl. You know he ain't right. When God fix you up just right, what you do is to glorify Him. Whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, the way you dress, walk and talk must give God glory. Then what you do, since you're not your own, you're bought with a price, the life you live is supposed to entice a sinner to be saved. And then when a saint see you, that ought to encourage the saint to keep marching on. So you're not your own. You can't do what you please. You must glorify God, win the loss, and strengthen the saints. So here come a man with a blood red suit. Blood red suit, yalla shirt, polka dot knit tie, two-tone alligator shoes on. That's another freak. Because he's not mobbist. He's not sober. He's not shamefaced. He's not chaste. He ain't holy, that's all. He's proud. He thinks he's the best thing to hit the earth. You interview him, it won't take long to find out how much he thinks of himself. He says, I'm not bragging, but uh, I have a high IQ. I'm two points above a genius. And uh, I never forget anything. My brain records it and never lose it. And uh, I don't want to brag too much. <laughs> but I have a hand that is special. My fingers are like rubber, see? I don't need a wrench or a screw. I can do anything. See? Big-headed and dumb as you can be. A proud look. God hates it. Well, a lying tongue. Psalm 101. Psalm 101 verse 7. Now, while she's getting there, let me just show you something here in brief. She give her a chance to get together. 
Seven is the number of fullness, completion, a finished work. Here are some things that you might be interested in. You already know about it. Some of you are taping. Others may try to get it down. Uh, when God refurbished the earth after Lucifer fell and fixed it up so he could put Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, told them to be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. Now it took him six days to refurbish the earth and get it ready for Adam and Eve. But on the seventh day, as you know, he rested. Symbolic of a finished work. Completion. You also know that it takes seven days to equal how many weeks? One week. One week. Seven days to make one week. It is recorded that there are seven colors in the rainbow red orange yellow green blue indigo and violet seven there are it's recorded only seven pure colors that the eye can distinguish but all the other colors are a mixture of those seven the human ear can distinguish seven notes on a scale. Now, you musicians have to help me out. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Is that wait a minute, preacher? That's eight. Well, I know that's eight. But the eighth is the same as the first one, just one octave higher. <laughs> seven. Seven. The... Man lives from seven ingredients from the soil. Nitrogen, potash, phosphate, lime, magnesium, ferrous oxide, and sulfuric acid. Seven, the number of fullness. Now did you know that when God called Moses up to Mount Sinai to give him the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments? Moses sat in God's presence and God hadn't spoken a word to him in six days. He sat right in the presence of the big boss man for six days and God ain't said a word to him. The Lord didn't speak to him until the seventh day. But the amazing thing about it is what I want to show you about this wonderful God we serve. Sitting up there, God wasn't saying nothing to him. And uh, in those six days, he didn't get sleepy, he did not get tired, he did not get hungry, he did not get thirsty. Just being in the presence of the big boss man. Oh God! That's all he needed! And that's where that Psalm 1611 comes in. Jesus uh, speaking about how you can really get close to God. He can fill every gap in your life. He said, thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. And at thy right hand, pleasures forevermore. Thank God. Love your husband. Learn how to be quiet and treat him right. Make him feel important. Yes, sir, encourage your husband. But if he turn a somersault on you and think he's a Casanova super fly and pack his rags and leave you. You don't backslide because he done left you. See? You love him, you want him saved, but you can make it without that rusty head man. Let Jesus be your company keeper. Let him hold your hand. Thank you, Jesus. Oh! Thank God. Hallelujah. <laughs> In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand is pleasures forevermore. Oh, my father. The city of Jericho, before the children of Israel could capture it, they had to have seven priests, seven trumpets, and seven marches. One time a day for six days, then on the seventh day, seven marches before they could take the city. Seven, the number of completion, fullness, 
the finished work. And did you know that when the prophet Elijah challenged the prophets of Baal at Mount Carmel? You know the story. He called fire from heaven and burned up the sacrifice, the stones and licked the water out of the ditch. Then he commanded to kill all those prophets. But after having done that, it hadn't rained for three and a half years. He went up on the mountain top, put his face between his legs, and called on the big boss man. But he had to pray seven times before the rain came. And when it came, it came in buckets full. So he had to rise himself up from the hill and start charging off the mountain top because the rain was coming heavy. But the funny thing about this man, <laughs> he was a prophet of fire and the Holy Ghost helped him out because he knew he was tired. And that prophet started to run him down that hill. Ahab had his chariot and he was going on ahead of him with horses. But Elijah stretched on out and went to run it. Thank you. He caught up with the chariot and passed it. <laughs> he outran horses for 20 miles. Jesse Owens could outrun a horse for 50 yards. But this prophet outrun horses for 20 miles. The Holy Ghost was working. All right, let's move on here, show you something else, and then we're going to hear this read. Oh, yes, thank God. Elisha, the prophet, prayed for the Shunammite woman's son who died. The woman put the dead boy on the prophet's bed and rode out to the field to get him. Told her servant, drive and slack not. Said, go ahead, don't slow down for me, go ahead. The prophet saw her coming, he sent his servant said now when you greet her ask her is it well with you is it well with your husband is it well with your son but she was grieved she went right on past the servant and fell at the prophet's feet and then the servants tried to pull her away and the prophet said no said no this woman is grieved and god have hid it from me when the prophet got to the house the dead boy was laying on his bed. He got up on top of the boy, put his eyes to the boy's eyes, his lips to the boy's lips, and the palm of his hand in the boy's palm. And the Holy Ghost started working. And the boy got warm. And the prophet got up and walked the floor a little bit. And he stretched back on top of him again. And the Bible says he sneezed. How many times? Seven times! He sneezed seven times and was restored to normal. Oh my, seven, that number seven. Now we see King Nebuchadnezzar, he did something you don't do. He tried to take the glory that belongs to God. Isaiah 42, 8 says, I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I'll not give to another neither my praise to graven images you see god will not let you take his glory the king tried to do it big shot look what i have done my knowledge and my brain power and my strength and my wisdom and when he did that god smote him he lost his mind driven from his palace eating grass like an ox until seven times passed over him for seven years he was out of his mind until he learned how to glorify God so we're going to soon hear that next verse there but you do know that on Calvary's tree Jesus uttered seven last sayings the sixth one was it is finished but the seventh one father into thy hand I commend my spirit. He didn't die till he got ready to die. Thank God. The Bible records that there are seven spirits before the throne of God. There are seven seals, seven trumpets, 
and seven vile judgments. And then it says in Revelation 16, 17, when the seventh vial was poured out, a cry comes out and says, it is done. Seven, the number of a finished work. Number of fullness. And now, we want to hear this with Psalm 101, 7. A proud look, a lying tongue. 101, verse 7. He that worketh deceit. He that worketh deceit. Shall not dwell within my house. Shall not dwell within my house. He that telleth lies. And he that telleth lies. Shall not tarry in my sight. Shall not tarry in my sight. A lying tongue. Oh God. Then it says, hands that shed innocent blood. I might next read Leviticus 19, 14. Get ready. Innocent blood. Now there's several ways that's done. One way is abortion. Abortion. Yes. You bold enough to lay down and make a baby. You ain't got guts enough to take care of the baby. You sorry thing, you. Hands that shed innocent blood. But it also means when you take advantage of the weak. You take advantage of people who are weak or feeble-minded. That's the same as shedding innocent blood. Listen how this reads, Leviticus 19, 14. Praise the name of the Lord. Thou shalt not curse the deaf. Do you hear that? You shall not curse the deaf because he can't hear what you're saying. You cussing him out and he don't know nothing you say. You ain't no good. Taking advantage of the weak. You know the man can't hear you cussing him out. All right. And read some more. Nor put a stumbling block before the blind. You hear that? Here's a blind man can't see nothing. And you put something in front of him so he can stumble. You know you ain't wrapped tight. Shedding innocent blood. Taking advantage of people. Read up. But shall fear thy God. But you better fear your God. Thank you, Jesus. You better. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I am the Lord. Because I am the big boss man. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank God. Then it says here, and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. Let's hear Proverbs 26, 27. A heart that deviseth wicked imagination. Whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein. Whoso diggeth a pit gonna fall in the pit. And he that rolleth a stone it will return upon him. He that rolls a stone is going to get you. So you better get saved and receive the Holy Ghost. That's what you need. Feet that are swift to run to mischief. I want you to hear John 8, 47. I want to show you something. Some of you know, others may not know. You would be amazed to know the powers of Satan... Uh, in witchcraft and sorcery and magic that's right here sometimes next door to you you don't have to go to Africa South America Haiti it's all around you I know I have a reader but she's not to the mic John 8 47 <laughs> praise the Lord and so it reads my father Feet that be swift in running to mischief. St. John 8, 47. 
He that is of God. He that is of God. Hear God's word. Will hear the word. Will love the word. Will obey the word. Ye therefore hear them not. You therefore hear them not. Because ye are not of God. Because you are not of God. Now I want to show you what's happening. Thank you so much. To show you what happened. People today will leave the word for something sensational. You don't realize that to be saved and Holy Ghost filled is the best thing on topsoil. You can't beat it nowhere. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead living inside your spirit. He's a comforter, a leader, a friend, a teacher, a guide, a strength giver. He's dynamite. So when you turn from that for something else, I know your head ain't wrapped tight. Now let me show you something. You know about palm readers. Some palm readers are just straight out fakes. They don't know no more about a palm than you do. Then there are other palm readers that's on the top shelf. They know the job. They, they have a, a chart, you know, on these palms. And they have certain lines. You have a life line, you have a heart line, a head line, and a marriage line. And that's just a few. They have a chart, you see. But I'm going to show you something else. There are some people who call themselves palm readers who are not really palm readers. But they are witches. They have a familiar spirit. So what they do, they just use the palm to throw you off. You think they're reading your palm, but they ain't reading your palm. They are getting information on you from their familiar spirit. Their spirit come to your house and observe your house. The color of the wallpaper in the kitchen, uh, your habits, your dog's name. The picture that's on the wall in the living room over the fireplace a spirit will come to your house and get that information and then come back to the witch and at your palm but she ain't reading your palm she already got the news on you she go to telling you about uh, the little throw rug in your bedroom that got flowers in the center and that picture of Christ on the wall and that little spirit special cupboard in the kitchen and the name of your dog and your cat so right away you say oh, this woman is good <sighs> yeah, she knows her stuff <laughs> and she'll use that to hook you to mess up your mind mess up your soul and damn you now there's something else the same thing in a man is called a wizard I, I met a man just like this I'm fixing to tell you about you can see his advertisement you know a lot of time they send the children out in the street to pass out the leaflets let them know what's going on all right so you hear about the man and you go and uh, you ring his bell no sooner than you ring the bell, he says, Come on in, Diane. I've been waiting for you. And you turn colors, your mouth drop open. He didn't even open the door. He said, Come on in, Diane. I've been waiting on you. And that's who it is, Diane. And so she said, My Lord, what's going on here? Then he sits you down. He says, Listen, I'm going to make you rich. And I'm going to give you power over all your enemies. So he already didn't call your name. And you're convinced that he knows something. So then, you're so overwhelmed with him, he takes you back in his little lab. And uh, he wants you to strip naked. He's going to anoint you with his special oil. That's right, the whole body, head, neck, everything. everything. 
That's right. Then he's going to give you a special bar of soap. Yes. And he tells you now, every day at three o'clock, you must take a bath with this soap for three days in a row. On the third day, say the 23rd Psalm three times. And the morning afterward, be right back here. 10 o'clock. And you'd be surprised the number of people that's tangled up in that. He rubs her in his special oil, rubs her down. I mean everything, butt naked. <laughs> and that soap is, is, is all messed up with all that magic in there, man. Instead of making her rich and giving her power over her enemies, he then made a slave out of the woman. Why? Because she wouldn't turn to Jesus and be saved. And receive the Holy Ghost and eat the Word of God. That's where the victory is. That's where the victory is. Satan is a copycat, a counterfeit. But the Holy Ghost, He's the real thing. Yeah! Bless God forever. Thank you, Jesus. So, feet that are swift running to mischief. People like for somebody to tell them something, you know. I see a light over your head. The Lord wants you to go to Nigeria. Eight days after you arrive, a tribal priest will come to your home. He will have a slit on his left cheek. And his right toe has been cut off. Don't want to get right. Eat the word. Let God bless you. Want somebody to tell you something? Lazy thing, you. So today, people want everything but the right thing. I'm encouraging you tonight about these seven things. What will please God dearly is for you to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Number. Of the six things here, it goes on to speak about a heart that devises wicked imagination, feet that are swift, run to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies. Now, under that heading, we get a person, anybody that counsels you and fail to give you the word, that's bad counsel. You don't want his opinion or his experience. You want God's word. You give counsel outside of God's word. That is bad. That's a false witness. And as we continue, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. He that soweth discord among brethren. Now you know this already. My reader's getting ready to the, get to the mic. Proverbs 26, 20 through 26. Reader's moving over to the mic. I just want you to know, and you know it already, it's good to be reminded. If you are a person that sows discord, divide people, get behind somebody's back, tell lies on them, pretend to be uh, somebody's friend and hate them like a rattlesnake, and, and doing some undercover work, and on the telephone calling somebody else's members up, trying to pull them out of that church and get them in your church. Use a rat. Use a dog. Use a snake. Use a hog. You ain't saved. Get in or get out. For God hit you with a bolt of lightning and bust your brains out. You don't want to live right? Get out! Rob a bank. Of course, you're going to hell anyhow. Get up and got the longest testimony in the house. Ask you to testify you're going to preach a sermon and make an altar call. And ain't even saved with your rusty self. (laughs) 
So in discord among brethren. Proverbs 26, 20 through 26. Where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. Where there is no wood, the fire will go out. So where there is no tail bearer. So where there is no tail bearer running your mouth all the time. Can't even sleep good. You wake up in the middle of the night want to tell somebody something. <laughs> a tail bearer. Where there's no wood, the fire goes out and reads some more. The strife speaks. Where there's no tail bearer, the strife will cease. Amen. You learn how to shut your big mouth. Okay. As coal are to burning coals. As coal is unto burning coals. And to wood fire. Uh-huh. So is a contentious man to kindle strife. So is a contentious man to kindle strife. A divider. A deceitful person. Talk out of two sides of the mouth. Read. The word of a tail bearer are as wounds. The words of a tail bearer is like a wound. Uh -huh. And as they go down into the innermost part of the belly. Goes down to the innermost part of the belly. Burning lips and a wicked heart. Burning are, lips and a wicked heart. Are like a potsherd covered with silver dross. Like a potsherd covered with silver dross. Like enamel that's covered up with dross. Deceitful, see? Read. He that hateth dissimeth with his lips. He that hateth divideth his deceitful with his mouth. And layeth up deceit within himself. He lays up deceit within himself. When he speaketh fair. If he should say something nice and sweet to try to butter you up and praise you. Believe, what? believe him not. Don't believe him. Don't you believe him. He ain't no good. He's after something. All right. For there are seven abominations in his heart. There are seven abominations in his heart. For hatred is covered by deceit. Hatred is covered by deceit. His wickedness sh shall be sure before the whole congregation. It's coming out, man. It's coming out. His wickedness shall be shown before the entire congregation. I hope God don't have to slap some of y'all down to get you straight. When he put a hurting on you, you hurt. Paralyzed from your neck down and you want the preacher and the evangelist and the pastor to be at your bedside. You better get yourself together. God hates so a dis discord among brethren. You need to get saved. Oh, my father. Revelation 4, 5. Now let's look at this seven day one. This is what I want you to do. Let God save you and give you the Holy Ghost. Let's hear how it reads, Revelation 4, 5. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings. Out of the throne proceeded lightnings. And thunderings. Thunderings. And voices. And voices. And there were seven lamps of fire. Seven lamps of fire. Burning before the throne. Look out here, seven burning lamps of fire before the throne of God. Which are the seven spirits of God. Those seven lamps are the seven spirits of God. Seven, the number of fullness. The number of perfection. The number of a finished work. And this is the seven God wants you to have. We just saw these seven things that God hates. But this is the seven that God loves. Receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Isaiah 11, 1, 2, and 3. Isaiah 11, 1, 2, and 3. Some are turning to that. The number 7. Number of fullness, completion of a work that is finished and a work well done. Let's hear Isaiah 11, verse 1 through 3. The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos. Start at 11 now. Isaiah 11, chapter 1, 2, and 3. Isaiah 11? Uh-huh. One, two, oh, three. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. I thought it was one. Uh-huh. I'm sorry. Isaiah 11. Praise God. Praise the Lord. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stream. There shall come forth a rod out of the stem. Of Jesse. Of Jesse. And a branch shall grow out of his roots. 
and a branch shall grow out of his roots and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him now she's smiling she knows this branch is sweet Jesus the prophecy of sweet Jesus and it says the spirit of the Lord number one shall rest upon him read the spirit of wisdom number and two the spirit of wisdom uh -huh. and understanding and number three spirit of understanding the spirit of counsel number four the spirit of counsel and might and number five power dynamite might the spirit of knowledge six spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord seven the spirit of the fear of the Lord read and shall make him of quick understanding shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord in the fear of the Lord and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes he shall not judge by what things he sees with his eyes neither reprove after the hearing of his ears neither will he reprove from what somebody done told him from the grapevine thank you Jesus the Holy Ghost that number seven thank God when you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost he comes in through your mouth and enters into your spirit the spirit of the living God living inside your spirit he's the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead you got dynamite on the inside glory and bless his sweet name and he is manifest in seven ways the beautiful seven he will give you anointing the hand touch of God the anointing the illumination thank you Jesus it's amazing it's a beautiful thing when God got his hands on you it, it, it works on people in different manners oh, some people when they have the touch of God uh, they get kind of light you know. feel like they could float something others when they get that anointing their eyes change you have to look two times to see what's going on the power of God is in the eyes thank God the unction of the Holy Ghost that's how that prophet Elijah could outrun horses for 20 miles the Holy Ghost was on him he didn't need no motorbike or jet plane just pick up them bones and go thank you Jesus oh God supernatural power then this Holy Ghost gives you knowledge supernatural knowledge you can't get it out of books can't get it in the library or university this don't come from no book it comes from the big boss man he, he speaks right to your mind thank God show you what to do how to win souls how to strengthen the weak how to bring light in dark places how to go out and how to come in yes the Holy Ghost gives you knowledge that you can't get from the book it comes from the big boss man hallelujah that's what you need some people uh, had to have shock treatment to get all that pressure off the brain so they could start all over again but all you needed the Holy Ghost he's a teacher a leader and a guide spirit of knowledge he lets you see into things. You don't have to be a college graduate. But he, he's the greatest teacher in the world. People will look at you and say, I know that woman don't have no education. But she got more sense than I got. <laughs> How does she do it? Can barely talk and don't read good. She got more sense than I got. Got the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost! Wonderful teacher anointing knowledge wisdom it give you how to take the knowledge and use it how to apply it to get things done it's amazing and he talked to you most any time you just kind of in the middle of the night and turn over and realize you was awake then he speaks and uh, my 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 when he speaks you got to slow down here now and take notice yes 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 he just now showed you how to solve the problem you've been puzzling over it scratching your head not knowing what to do 
But that one voice, that one word arrested your attention. And you said, that's it. Thank God. That's it, man. Thank. Yes. Anointing, knowledge, wisdom, understanding. Some of you have heard some of this under the tent. It's amazing. You'd be surprised that if you live godly, you will suffer persecution. You will be hated. And the thing about it is sometimes the one closest to you that smiles the biggest and butters you up is the one that means to cut you down. Whatever way the enemy put it in them, they'll try to use magic on you. Put something in your food that if you eat it, it's supposed to ruin you. Because maybe she wants your husband. And she got to figure how to do away with you. So she gets some stuff in you and make you real bad sick because the doctors can't see it. They know something the matter with you, but they can't see this because it's spiritual. All their diagnosis and according to their knowledge, they can't find a thing wrong with this woman. And you two steps from the graveyard. And they can't help you. You'd be amazed. Those that smile in your face and hug your neck and eat your bread. Sometime out to kill you. But with the Holy Ghost, God will speak right to your mind. Just alert and sharp and clear. And it'll wake you up. You look at that person and they'll make a certain move or a certain action and it'll all flash. And then you say, my God, if it wasn't for the Holy Ghost, she would have done killed me long ago. I'd have been crazy or paralyzed or blind. But thank God for the Holy Ghost. Anointing, knowledge, understanding wisdom counsel he'll fix you up so that you just, just don't barely make it see I hope I don't know if I talked this the last time there's an idea going around some people take a scripture in Peter and says all your fasting all your praying and all your preaching you will scarcely be saved and that's been passed down by tradition the Bible doesn't say that in first in Peter it tells you about people who are careless on the journey those busy bodies and those folks that run the big mouth and sow discord say so now if they make it at all they'll scarcely make it if they repent in time so it, it didn't say the righteous would scarcely be saved it said, but if the righteous be scarcely saved where will the sinner and ungodly appear Speaking of rowdy folks that ain't baked right, ain't wrapped tight, want to do something on the side and still sing in the choir. Yeah, they want to do some dirt and then testify a half an hour and know they ain't right with their no good self. Those are the ones that scarcely be saved if they be saved at all. But we who are holy people, Second Peter 1 10 and 11 tells us that. If ye shall do these things, add to your faith knowledge, vir knowledge, virtue, virtue, brotherly kindness, and on and on. If these things be in you and abound, they shall make you so that you shall never fall. The eleventh verse says, For God hath administered unto us an abundant entrance into his kingdom. Some people got it wrong. If I can just make it in. If I can just make it in. You sorry thing. You don't have to just make it in. By the skin of your teeth. But God have administered an abundant entrance. You can go in with plenty of room. Play space. 
You ain't got to worry about nothing. Thank God about An abundant entrance into his kingdom. Hallelujah. You don't have to scarcely do nothing for God. When you receive the Holy Ghost. Anointing. Wisdom. Knowledge. Understanding. Counsel. And the fear of God. See. See. That Holy Ghost is like a built-in safety valve. He keeps you from getting the big heads. Some people have one success. Uh-oh. The head swells. And the nose is up in the air. I knew it all the time. But now God done proved it. Before the whole congregation. I'm an eagle-eyed prophet. That ain't the half of it. Before it's all over with, I'm going to take this town. When I finish this town, I'm going to take the next town. When I get to the next town, I'm going to take the whole nation. Then I'm going to Africa. I'm going to take China and Japan. <laughs> Big-headed thing, you. But the Holy Ghost, he'll work in you so that your love and respect and fear of God will keep you in check. Because, listen, we are God's children, we are his messengers, his ambassadors, but we can't save nobody. We can't get the devil out of nobody or put the Holy Ghost in nobody. I ain't never healed nobody. I know you haven't either. And I'm not a miracle worker. Sweet Jesus. He's the one. All we do is love him, honor him, respect him. Keep the faith by staying in touch with him through prayer and Bible study. It should average out to two hours and 24 minutes a day. That's the tithe of your time. We must give God the first fruit of our increase. And our time is part of our increase. The tithe is more than money. There are 24 hours in the day. You owe God 10% of that. Two hours and 24 minutes. That's the time. Part of that time is in prayer. And when you pray, you just look him in the face and make love to him. You can't see him, but he's right there. If you want to lay your head on his lap, just go ahead and lay your head on his lap. Oh, yes. Oh, my, 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 my. <laughs> oh, sweet Jesus. Sweet Holy Ghost. I would like to stay here, but I know I got to get out and do some work. But while I'm here, I'm going to enjoy it while I'm here. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. The other part is reading that word. That's when God talks back to you. When you study the Bible, that's God talking back to you. That keeps you complete. Spirit, soul, and body fed day by day. You can't get tired on the journey because each day you're being renewed. Every day is a brand new day. This is the day the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Jesus. If you do that daily, daily, God works with that to perfect you. Whatever need fixing, he'll fix it. If you still quick tempered, you say you got the Holy Ghost, but somebody rub you, you turn dark. And you're fixing to give him a piece of your mind and you need all your mind yourself. So by giving God that time daily, two hours and 24 minutes, you, ha you have laid yourself before him. And that's what he loved. That's what God loved. Then he could just go to fixing on you. Get that out. Put this in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when he finished with you, you're ready to go. 
dynamite, pleasing in his sight. That'll keep you from getting the big heads. That's why the Bible says that anyone to be a leader over God's people should not be a novice, a beginner, a new convert, a greenhorn, still wet behind the ears. It's got to be someone that's seasoned, spirit-filled, loving God to set over God's people. Because souls are precious. You know what I did uh, when the pastor had arranged for me to come for the tent last year and uh, had approached me about teaching the book of Revelation. I had taught some of it before. I never taught at all. But every morning, early, I'd go out in the woods and I'd say to God, I said, Lord, this is an awesome task that you have given me. What makes it awesome is that I'm ministering to delicate people, human beings. And that's an awesome sight because these are people that Jesus died for. And now you give me the task to teach and feed and minister to people that Jesus died for. I said, it's too much for me. It's awesome. You've got to help me. You've got to help me. Every morning I was out in the woods talking to God like that. And in the afternoon and when I was studying trying to prepare, God did it. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And if anybody tries to praise me, I, I must, I probably turn dark. I just came from Jacksonville, North Carolina. And the pastor was saying to the people that have never been there before, he said, I'll guarantee you when you hear this man, he, he said, you'll never be the same. He said, this man got wisdom and understanding I ain't seen nowhere. And while he was talking, my head was down. I must have turned two shades dark. Because <laughs> I can't do it. God is doing it. But I'm, I'm glad he's using this little old body and my little old voice. I'm glad I'm part of it, but I didn't do it. Thank God. So then, the Holy Ghost will make you love God and reverence him so that you'll never even try to share his glory or take it from him. You don't get no big heads because you have in you the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Oh, my Father, don't you see we must have this Holy Ghost? We don't have much time left. That's why when I said to you tonight, I hadn't told Brother Crump that I had heard from Okinawa, they're pleading for me to come there. So if all of this goes through, uh, if the Lord doesn't come soon, by then it, it'll be a while before I get to see you all again. Maybe eight months or so, I don't know. But I'm so thrilled you came tonight that I could see you and, and talk with you some. And I wanted you to hear about the number seven. I want you to don't stop short of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Don't stop short. Thank God. So here's what we're fixing to do. When you get it ready to let you come forward, we want to do it all in one. You're not saved, you come down and ask God to save you. While you're talking to him, there'll be someone nearby to help you to open your heart wide to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Those that need miracle healing, you can receive it all. I better I don't know what's going on here, but check this out here. We're doing pretty good. You can also at the altar, all across the front, side by side. God can do it all. Forgive you, save you, sanctify and baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And then heal your body, spirit, soul and body. All you have to do is tell him what you want and mean it from your heart. And while you're yet speaking, he will do it for you. Seven lamps of fire before the throne of God, which is the Holy Ghost. If it's seven bad things, it's an abomination. But seven good things is perfect in God's sight. Bow your heads. Father, I thank you for... I'm lost for words to explain how much we love you. 
It's astonishing. Your love, you've loved us so strong, so long. We can never merit it or deserve it. We bring nothing in our hands. We can't say, Lord, because of this, you ought to bless me. There's nothing we can bring. But it's because of sweet Jesus that we have this blessing and honor. Father, tonight, do a special work. Save every person here that's not saved. Sanctify and baptize with the Holy Ghost. Heal all manner of sickness and disease. Cast the devils out and loose the minds of the people. Let the Holy Ghost have right away. Let it be an eternal weight of glory. In Jesus' name we thank you. Hallelujah. Let us please stand upon our feet and come down across the front of the altar. When you come down, you know what it is you need. Ask God to do it for you. We will have, if necessary, some of the ministers in among you to get near and help you. Those that have a need of any description, you don't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you need healing or miracles, you have not been able to get out from under the burden, the family is about to tear apart, you don't know what to do, come down, stand across the front. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Wonderful Savior. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. My soul says yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My soul says yes. 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 Soul said yes. 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 Soul said yes. Yes. Yes, my Lord, so said yes, 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 my soul said yes, 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 so said yes, 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 hallelujah, so said yes, 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 my Lord, so said yes. Yes, yes, so said yes, 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 so said yes, 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 so said yes, 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 my Lord, so said yes, yes. We're going to hold the music now. Open your mouth and tell God what you want. Just say it out your mouth. Tell him, forgive me, Lord. I'm sorry. Save me. Sanctify me. I want this Holy Ghost. Give me the Holy Ghost. Heal my body. Put my family back together. You tell him what you want. We're coming down to you. You tell him just what you want. Hallelujah. Father, let this be a night of remembrance. Stretch forth your hand. Move mightily in our midst. Holy Ghost, touch right here. Give the answer. Loose now. Break the yoke. Sanctify the people. Baptize with the Holy Ghost. Every sickness and disease, I curse you in the name of Jesus. Every infirmity, every malady, the blood's against you. I charge you by Jesus Christ to leave this place. Get out the body. Go. Jesus cast you out. Go. The Lord rebuke you. I charge you. Go. Jesus cast you out. The blood's against you. Oh. God let the healing flow. Let the miracle flow. Sanctify that soul. Baptize with the Holy Ghost. Move in the temple. Yes Lord. Oh God. Oh, my Savior. Yes, Lord. Holy Ghost, have your way. Holy Ghost, move on the people. Yes, Lord. Yes. Oh, God. Holy Ghost, save.
say, say, sanctify, heal, break the yoke, lift the burden. Thank you, Jesus. Let it flow, Holy Ghost. Let it flow, Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Save that woman. Sanctify that soul. Baptize with the Holy Ghost. Put the family back together. Use the mind. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yay. 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 La la la. Oh la la. Kika la ba. O shatani. Hatana satana. Imokonya na kasitana. Jesus. Na kotolo kotolo. Ikala na satana nata. Jesus. Iando haka. Ikata na da. Jesus. Oh my God. Ikalo kasatana. Irano satana. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Baptize that soul. Sanctify the people. Fill that soul. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Forgive, Lord. Forgive them. Forgive the sin. Take away the sin. Sanctify the soul. And fill with the Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Yes, I'm so glad. Jesus lifted me. Oh, I'm so glad. Jesus lifted me. Yes, I'm so glad. Jesus lifted me. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me yes I'm so glad Jesus oh I'm so glad Jesus lifted me glory hallelujah Jesus lifted me I'm so glad Jesus yes I'm so glad Jesus, oh, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Glory, hallelujah. Jesus, yes, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Yes, I'm so glad Jesus. Yes, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Glory, hallelujah. Yeah, hey, I'm so glad. Yes, I'm so glad. Jesus. Well, I'm so glad. Hallelujah. Yes, I'm so glad. Jesus. Lifted me, I'm so glad, Jesus. Yes, I'm so glad, Jesus lifted me. Oh, hallelujah! Yes, yes, I'm so glad, Jesus. I'm so glad, Jesus lifted me. Yes, I'm so glad. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Yeah! Glory! Hallelujah! Oh, glory! So glad. Yes, I'm so glad. Hey, hey! I'm so glad. 
Yes, Lord. Everybody that can clap your hands and say thank you, Jesus. Be glad about it. Tell him thank you. Be glad. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Hey. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Be glad. Be glad, man. Be glad. Yeah. Hey. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Ha, 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 ha. Thank you. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Be glad about it. Be glad about it. Be glad about it. Thank you, Jesus. Oh.